I'm sorry. I'm saying that because if you're watching this video, you've probably broken something. Probably a key on a MoXF F8 Yamaha keyboard. But don't worry, I am here to help. Today, we're going to go over how to replace a key on a broken Yamaha Mo XF8. What you're going to need? You're going to need a drill with a Phillips head screwdriver just to make things easier. And preferably, a Phillips screwdriver for hand driving screws that's magnetized. This is just to get at those hard to reach screws that this can't get to. But make sure, if you can get one, to get a magnetized one because sometimes you might drop a screw and if you do, it's a whole lot easier to get out with a magnetized screwdriver. So here's the problem. It's definitely broken. This used to be down further on the keyboard, but uh, to get it and to make it easier and just to get by in a hurry, I moved it up to the top of the keyboard. Doesn't matter where it's broken, the procedures will be the same. But yeah, it's broken. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn the keyboard over on its top. I have this table covered so we don't scratch it. And you may be able to see, I'll show you here in a second, there are a lot of screws on this. All of these have to come off. The only ones that don't have to come off are the grommets for the uh, to keep from scratching stuff. And then there are two here that I'll show you in a minute that have um, that don't look like the other ones, and those don't have to come out. So let's look at what we have to take out. All of these screws, and this right here, you can see. It's this screw right here. See how it has that silver around it? It's not through the plastic. You don't have to take that one out. And there is a matching one right there. You can see. All of the other ones have to come out. One thing to note, these screws along the front, these here, they are shorter screws. And so you'll want to keep them separate from the regular ones that are on the sides and on the back because um, they are a different size and you do not want to mix them up because it will make a big mess. So here we go. Okay, now it's time to pull the top and the bottom apart. What you're going to do is simply going to lift up. You're going to lift up. And this whole thing lays flat in this direction. There are a whole bunch of wires and cables. But you do not want to mess up. But the hard part about this keyboard is we are looking at the bottom side of the keypad of the keyboard. So we're going to have to take out this screw all the way down and then this keyboard will just lay over. Do not take out these. These are the hinges that this keyboard is going to rock over. Okay, so when you're taking this apart, do not take this off. It's just these seven screws in the back, and the, this keyboard will just lay out. Now before we lay this keyboard over, we need to pay attention 
this wire right here. This is what talks from the keyboard to the to the computer on the on the um, computer. So we need to gently pull this out of the little slot. Be careful not to touch those contacts because if you do it could get corroded and things stop working right. But just slide that out of the little strip right there and it'll the keyboard will be free. Okay. Now these keys come in octaves. They're not single keys like the Mo's or the Motifs or all those things. They are the octave strips. So to, to take one out, you'll have to replace the whole set. You can see right there, I have cracked the back of it. And that is usually what will happen. These little plastic parts that join it together will just crack and break and then they just start wobbling. So. Let's take this whole thing out. There are four screws that hold this in. And then you're going to pull this whole key set up and it will start to slide forward. And that's how we're going to get it out. The whole slide forward, and then the whole thing comes up. And now it's free. Yay! There's your problem. So I have the replacement keys here. Good as new. I'll put this back together. The trick here. Okay, so that's how they go. There's some hooks all along here that fit into the grooves on the keys. So you slide the grooves and the hooks together and then it comes together in the back. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Put back the four screws. Be careful not to over tighten these because you do not want to strip these out. And just like that. Good as new. Yay! Now we put this together at the hinge that we had earlier. Something that's important, you'll notice when we took this out, this little signal strip goes under that and then down into the connector. Remember, try not to connect, touch the connectors if possible. And just like that, we are ready to put this thing back together. Now you'll have to look down in through these little holes because they don't all obviously have screw holes behind them, but there are lots of holes that lead nowhere. So look down inside and if you don't see daylight, there's a screw place there. Sometimes it can be helpful to have a flashlight or something like that. And I like to set my screw whenever I'm screwing it back together so that the clutch engages pretty early because I really don't want to mess this up. Ta-da! Now we are going to Fold this top back over. Careful not to break your line. Okay, 
Make sure everything's lined up. And just like that. It is new. I hope you found this tutorial informative and it will definitely save you a few bucks in the end. The, the key came, I think it cost about $16 plus shipping and handling. Way cheaper than sending it off to get fixed. Have a good day.